Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Um, today's topic is chasing your dreams and I have Barbara here with Let's Grow Together. Do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everybody. My name is Barbara. I am the founder of Let's Grow Together. Thank you so much, Tiana, for having me. Absolutely. So I'm gonna jump right into it and if you wanna just tell us your story. Okay, so um, my name is Barbara, as I said, I was born in Africa, Kenya, and I moved to the States about a decade ago. I started Let's Go Together Ministries on 2015. It was a prayer um, that I prayed to God, and I said I wanted to be connected to like-minded individuals, and at the time, I didn't have people that understood my, the importance of faith and the, uh, and the importance of just running after God and, and just being involved with who he's called us to be, so that's where I started and it's been phenomenal I've been able to host over 70 Bible studies and that means with 70 different people from across the country so it's been such an honor yeah absolutely I think that's so amazing um what at what point did you realize what your dream was that you that this was something you're passionate at what was that aha moment for you um, I would like to say, well, I was born by, my mom was a minister. She was a pastor before she passed away. And my, my mom passed away when I was 14. But I've, I think it's always been in me. Like the way God says, there comes a time when your gift comes up, but sometimes it's born within you. So I've always had this gift. It just found the right moment to come out and it just happened to be this way. But on top of this, I've read worship. I've done other things. This is just actually, it's a side bet, but right now I feel like it's becoming a part of who I am and it's becoming a part of my story. But actually a lot of people know me as a worship reader, but before that, you know, it wasn't so much, but I love it. I love, uh, I love encouraging people. I love talking about Jesus. I I think it's within me it's not something that I had in a aha moment I just think it was the right the right time came up and it just you know it happened to be all over but yeah it's, it's just within me that's amazing I definitely understand how you feel when you say like it's just something that's always been there right. I, for me um I my passions and my purpose has always been a part of me. I just didn't realize it. Oh. And so when I had my aha moment, mm -hmm. I looked back and I was like, it's always been there. I just didn't know. Yeah. And I think part of doing this Chasing Your Dream series for me is to highlight for other people because so many times we overlook our purpose because yes. it comes naturally. Yes. yes. And so I hope everyone listening understands that the things that come naturally sometimes are the things you were put on this earth to do because yep. just because it comes naturally to you doesn't mean it comes naturally to everyone. Absolutely. It's your purpose. It's what drives you. But sometimes we don't know what's driving us because right. we're not aware. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you hope to give back to the world? I hope to inspire young women and young men to continue to love God. Like, I, I want to show other young men and women that there are other young men and women serving God. If you are from somewhere and you feel like, you know what, I'm the only one who is sold out to God in my youth group, I want you to look up and be like, hmm, that guy from New York, hmm, that girl from Chicago. Like, I want you to know there's so many young people out here that love Jesus. Like, that's, that's my hope and focus for this ministry. Yeah. Absolutely. So while we're on that subject, um, I myself am a, I, I would consider myself a young Christian. I absolutely love God. Um, and I think our generation is coming to a place where we can say, I absolutely love God. Right. And I'm comfortable with who I am. And so I think there's such a balance between um, not wanting to be an embarrassment for the cult, for the, for the religion or um, an embarrassment of God, but understanding that, you know, being okay with who you are while still trying to get better. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you see with um, young people being fully committed to their relationship with God? I would say comparison, comparing yourself with other people. You know, you're probably so focused with what other people are doing. Maybe they're not serving God and you get distracted because of, because of comparing yourself. So I think the first thing is getting to know yourself, identifying yourself and identifying yourself first should come with God because whenever your identity comes from God, then you don't have a problem with comparing with other people. But I, you know, it also comes with age. You know, as we grow, we mature, we learn that, you know, other people, People, business and lives are not our own and also that we are called in our own journey so I think just 
a comparison is what kills a lot of young people. Absolutely. And I heard a quote, it says, comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. For sure. I know for me, one of the challenges, because um, with Nicole's network and with Motivational Monday, I try to be as open and honest and, and transparent as I possibly can. Yes. I feel like sometimes um, my openness and my transparency doesn't get a warm reception of the, the religious community. Uh -huh. When really, I think it's necessary um, uh -huh. because it shows the world like, hey, I'm not perfect and I know I'm not. Whereas I think so many times um, we in the religious community get a, a, a bad rap on, on being fake um, mm -hmm. and judgmental. So could you elaborate on your thoughts about that? Um, you know what? I think it comes from a place of people forgetting that nobody is perfect and the only perfect person is God. I think sometimes we can have walked in this journey of faith for so many years and think that we have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important for us to remember that the other person that you're looking at as if they don't know what they're saying, and they could probably not know what they're saying, just forgetting that we were there once. So right. I think as a community, the most important thing we can do is put ourselves in their shoes and remember that God should be the one that should pick on us, not, not each other. We should not pick on each other. We should let God be the one to judge. But I think a lot of times what happens is judgment. We, we're too quick to judge. I myself, you know, I've been there. But um, I think it's, it's about time for us to remember no one of us is better than the other. We are Absolutely. all the mm -hmm. Absolutely. And honestly, I think that's such a critical piece of it. Um, I actually recently did a Motivational Monday on judgment and trying to create a judgment-free zone because at the end of the day, simply because someone else sins differently than you doesn't make them a worse person. And I firmly believe that we as Christians were put on this earth to show God's love, yes. not God's judgment. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think if we were more if we were quicker to love our neighbor than it was to judge others, um I really believe that we would make a greater impact as a Christian community. Yeah. And even in truly, like if you think about um I forget the scripture, I think it's in Matthew, but they Jesus was asked what are the greatest what is his greatest commandment? Mm -hmm. And he said, number one love me with all of your heart mm -hmm. number two love your neighbor as your own yeah so those mm -hmm. are the most important things like if you get those two right yeah. everything else will fall into line and i'm not saying that i'm perfect in either one of those yeah. if you really focus on that mm -hmm. i really think that makes everything that much more easier and yeah. Honestly, I have too many flaws to be worried about somebody else's flaws and what they're getting wrong. Like, I got enough to worry about, you know? Uh, right. Yeah, but I, I back you up. I, I agree with you 100%. But I also think it's one, like, the second one, love your neighbor, it takes a lot of sacrifice. I think, it, you know, it's so easy to love yourself. It's so easy to get consumed on, in yourself and what you're doing that you forget other people. I think it's one of the prayers that we need to pray for ourselves, even myself. To remember to love my neighbor as much as I love myself. It's very, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Very difficult. So I understand. Um, <laughs> what keeps you motivated to keep going day after day? God, I don't, I don't think there is anything else that's bigger than him. Just knowing where he's brought me from. And for me, coming from Africa to here, the transition, um, losing my mom, a lot of things, just life. I think the things that have happened in my life keep me going and just understanding that he loves me whenever he takes me out of one season, takes me to the other. He always has my hand. So, um, just God, he's, he's amazing. He's all we got. So God. Beautiful. That's, that's really good. If you could go back and tell your teenage self some one thing, what would it be? Don't worry about what people have to say. I love that. I love that. But, but you know what? It took so long to get here, though. It took so long. It took so long to get here to be like, I'm content with Barbara, with what she believes and who she is. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is, um, other people's opinion of you is none of your business. 
Oh, I like that. Huh? And it, it's so freeing for me, at least, because we put so much weight on, oh, what are other people going to think when, oh, what are they going to say about, and oh, this person feels this way about me. And what do I feel about me? Yeah. What do I think about me? Right, right. How do I think I did today? Uh-huh. Really and truly. Um, oh, so I think I, I, to hear someone else say that. I'm very um, excited because I think it's so important. And like you, it took me so long to get there. It took me so long to get there. And I will say the hardest opinion to take away the power from was my mother's. Huh. I put so much weight in what my mother thought and mm -hmm. wanting her validation and wanting to hear her say that she was proud of me. Yes. And I had to ask myself, are you proud of you? Huh. Yeah. What do you think about what you're doing in life? Yeah. And when I got to that place, I was like, huh. <laughs> okay. So that's just <laughs> bonus, you know? Huh? It's definitely freeing. Um, so what projects are you currently working on? I actually just finished on what, what I would say has been my big project for this year. I just released a book. It's a 30-day devotional. Um, mm -hmm. That was what I for to the year. I, if anything else comes up, I'll know. But for now, that has been so far this year. My and that's year. huge. Could you tell us a little bit about the devotional? Yes, as I said, it's a 30-day devotional. It has different topics from the Holy Spirit uh, um, talking about ourselves loving ourselves the way god sees us it, it, it is in first person so it's god speaking to you mm -hmm. so you know it's kind of like you know if you've been hurt by church and it teaches you how to not look at that aspect but look at god and pray for the church you know god has called us um to be the ones to pray on behalf of the church and on behalf of his people if it's the holy spirit he's speaking to you and reminding you that you always have the holy spirit if it's about grieving you know he reminds you that he's always there for you so it has a lot of um, a lot of topics. Talks about finance, how we should do and give our uh, our ten percent to him. It has everything. Yeah, you can find it on Amazon if you know anyone would love to to, to get it. It's kind of black. Absolutely. Uh, what's the name of it so we can find it on Amazon? It's called Rekindle with Him. Rekindle with Him. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. You touched on one topic that I would like to highlight for just a moment. Right. Um, and that's the subject of grief. Yeah. Um, and I say that because as someone who um, has an active uh, relationship with God, uh, when I was grieving the, the miscarriage of my twins, okay. um, the one thing that I wanted so badly was a spiritual response to grief. Hmm. And I would search high and low for sermons on YouTube, um, you know, high and low, just looking for a response to hmm. how to deal with that grief. So first and foremost, I commend you for including that in your devotional because it's such an important piece and understanding that I know for me, the hardest part of my spiritual uh, processing of the grief was understanding that I serve a God who can do literally anything. Nothing. And I begged him to save my sons and he still chose not to. And that was the hardest part of it. So what do you say to people who are dealing with that grief um, or in dealing with God hurt? because they feel like God let them down in the moment that they needed the most. Yeah, I, I would say, okay, first, I know it feels like God hurt you. I know it feels like he let you down. But realizing that he is a God that thinks positive of us. There is no single time that he does anything to harm us or to hurt us. And I talk about it. I say, I know sometimes you feel like um, you've been hurt. You're broken. You can't even talk anymore. Just remember that whatever I do, I do it out of love. It may not look like love, but it's love. And also remembering that they're not dead. You mean to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. so when think of it in that aspect you will get to see them again i think that's like 
it changes the whole perspective because they're no longer dead. They're alive to you. They're just missing. It's kind of like they're traveling. They've gone somewhere mm-hmm. else and you are going to see them again. So I think just understanding that God will never hurt you first and second that you will get to see them again just changes the game because you're no longer worried like what's happening to them now. Absolutely. And I'm in a much, much better place now, but I do recognize that someone needed to hear that. Yes, you know? I know. Absolutely. Because there, it did take me um, some time to kind of recover with my relationship with God. Um, mm-hmm. And I will say one of the biggest things that caused me to question that um, was constantly hearing, it's all a part of God's plan. I know. Um, and I, what I realized in processing my grief was how um, insensitive some of the very common responses to grief are. Um, like I heard some of the craziest responses. I heard, um, oh, you're young. You can have more children. Um, what? Yep. And I actually lost my twins one at a time. So after the first one, it was, well, you still have another one. Oh man, people, wow. Um, and it's all a part of God's plan and everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it really opened my eyes to um, like the intent obviously was pure, Mm. but we as a community have to do better about how we're helping people grieve. Right. And sometimes it really is just as simple as I know you're hurting. How can I help? Yes. You know, as opposed to forcing the answer on them, just asking the question, you know, yeah. So I appreciate you, A, including that um, a part of, you know, a spiritual walk, because so many of us deal with grief without even realizing that it mm-hmm. becomes a part of our baggage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Awesome. So where do you see your dream going in the next five years? Wow. Have I even thought about that? <laughs> in the next five years, I hope to have impacted as many people as I can. Um, and just to draw a as many people to to God, you know, I say it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's about God. And I just hope that people get to realize how much God loves them and how much he cares for them and that he has so much in store for them. And I know we hear that all the time, Mm -hmm. but I pray that I personally do that impact. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh And I I just want to say, um, I appreciate you being on here. That was the last question that I had. And I do want to give you the opportunity to share any final thoughts if you'd like. Yeah, well, I appreciate you for having me. Um, Not much. I just want to say thank you so much for even considering me to be here. And I pray that whatever you're doing, that God will continue to bless your ministry, your work, your personal life, whatever it is. And everybody that's going to watch this, we pray that God is going to speak to them. So thank you. Thank you. Where can we find you on social media? You can find me at Let's Go Together Ministry underscore 2017. Um, Yes. Awesome, and that's on Instagram yeah. or elsewhere as well. That's Instagram. Yeah, pretty much Instagram. If you go on Instagram, we'll probably get like you to anywhere else that we are. So Perfect. I think. Thank you again, Barbara, for just being a part of this and sharing your story with us. Um, and I really appreciate you um, opening up and being honest about your perspective. Yeah, thank you for having thank me. Thank you. All right, thanks.